Hi, I'm Will Patrick, and my poem is called Jump. Don't be afraid, my dad's voice echoed through my head. My talons gripped the tree branch, like an antiphonic squeezing his prey. I peered down at the ground. Bad idea. From my vantage point, the ground may have rolled in the bottom of the cliff. A queasy feeling arose in my gullet, and my balance wavered. Haunting stories my brother had told me when I was a hatchling. I recall him telling me about a nestling that had fallen into the river in his first flight and then was devoured by a piranhas. I forced myself to ease my horrific thoughts and began to think of the nest and how cozy it was. I began to let my thoughts wander and I came to think of my brother's first flight. He'd done it with such finesse as if he'd been flying his whole life. I envied him. If only it was that easy for me. Why does he always have to get the glory and praise? I don't want to be the shadow of my brother. A small spark of ambition will lit in my head. Just don't look down, I thought. Then, for the first time, I jumped. My poem is entitled Bedtime Monster Roll Call. <laughs> don't be afraid, my precious little one. I just checked with the head monster, and it seems that all the monsters are gone tonight. Claws is monster on vacation at the beach, riding the waves and getting very sunburned because they're never outside now. Crawly under the bed monster? Off at Crawly Monster Camp, learning please and thank you. You and I both know how rude those guys can be. Shadow in the corner monster? Gone to Texas? <laughs> the 10th annual Shadow Monster Reunion. <laughs> Maybe they'll visit Grandma's house and bring back banana pudding or pecan pie. Pickle Monster? Oops, I forgot. She never leaves. Oh yeah, she's here all right. Quick, under the covers. Close your eyes. Oh no, it's too late. She sees you. Who <laughs> 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 name is Jerry Young, and I'm going to read a piece called Pumbo. But in my two minutes, I have time for three definitions because otherwise, you won't understand what I'm saying. Uh, the very old words, one is Pumbo, which means basically a dumb cart that uh, people use to. Uh, it tips the back, and you can dump the manure out if you have to get out of the street. And then they also used in the French Revolution, they used a, um, a cart similar to that to haul people to the, to the uh, guillotine. And then afterwards, haul the bodies away. And I had a few minutes to. And a tucking stool is a stool of repentance. It's a, it would tie a woman usually to a stool and put them out in the town square and rear fuel them because they did something wrong. Which by the metaphor is what we're doing. And then earth downs is an old English term, so old that even the English don't know what it means. Uh, it's a place of refuge. So, tumble. Tumble. Tumble and tremble, tumble and fall. Riding in our dumb carts, merrily to the mall. Sitting in our cutting stools, several sizes small. Riding in our dumb carts, never mind the rules. Making earth a dumb cart, dumbing down like fools. Dumb in our dumb hearts, hung in the earth downs. Down in the wells. Don't be afraid, you say. Who am I to tell? Mornings of our life together, where poverty was translucent, ineffective, and we were warm in the colors of our kitchen and unafraid. My name is Peter Beckman. I have fallen my sweet potato field in Okinawa, 1945. I learned about terror on Okinawa. The very first night, sleeping on a sheet of plywood in a sweet potato field, I was awakened at midnight by the sound of feet pounding near my head, shouts, and automatic gunfire. Unable to see, I lay helpless in terror. As the firefight moved away, I slowly recovered myself. In the morning, laid out by the guard post like cordwood, 
were the small, ragged bodies of starved soldiers who had risked their lives for food and lost. Later, at the far edge of the sweet potato field, I was astonished to see two Okinawan women, one wrinkled, old but sturdy, was hoeing sweet potatoes with a mattock. Hiding behind her was a young woman in a beautiful white dress. As I came closer, the old woman raised her mattock and made threatening gestures at me, fear and determination on her face. The young woman made a little whimpering cries. In that sweet potato field on Okinawa, I decided I would rather endure death than cause it.